Okay guys, so the bonds built here at Ikuk. Like I said in my earlier video, you go through hardships, you go through the pain, you go through the loss of sleep, lack of sleep, you share your pain with everyone. Those who are around you, they share your pain, they know what you're going through, they know how you feel. And because of that, you find friends in that. The bonds here at Ikuk are so amazing, they're so great. You get to meet a lot of people from different, different parts of life. You meet people from Washington, you meet state, you meet people from California, Arizona, Maine, New York, Florida, everywhere. You know, you meet, you meet them everywhere. And so, everyone's so different. At the first week here, or first two weeks here, it's all about finding out who's who, what makes who tick. Who are they? What are their names? Et cetera, et cetera. But then once the season starts going on, you start um, realizing who each person is. You know, if you're sharing the pain, your wrist is hurting, and the person next to you, his wrist is also hurting, you guys will develop a friendship. You know, that says, you know what? This place sucks. I agree with you. You agree with me? Let's be friends. That's, much, that's pretty much how it goes. And... You get to, like I say, you get to meet a lot of people and you build friendships with them that last a long time. Like, two years ago, I met two guys up here, Jason Massey and Ernesto Cervantes. And those, the three of us, we're the three, three amigos up here. We've been through, through a lot together, from me, Cook, to Petersburg, and everyone in between. It's, we're, we're inseparable. And so, two years ago, I met, I met both of them here through the power of Pokemon. We went to Petersburg together, and yeah, it's you know, I miss I always I miss, I miss both of them. Every year when I come back here, I look forward to seeing both of them. They're both from California. I'm from Arizona. We only meet up here in Alaska, here at Etuk, and we always miss each other. We hang out with each other. We share stories. We tell jokes. We just enjoy each other's company. And last Thursday, Ernesto left Etuk. Jason, he used to come with me to Petersburg. He's going, him and his father are going to Petersburg with us. But when Ernesto left, that's when a piece of my heart left too. Like, Nero and I, we've been together since we cooked our first days here at e Cook. We suffered the hardships. We went through a lot together. We always started out in e Cook and we ended together in Petersburg for the past two years. Now, this year, we started out in e Cook and he had to go home early because of his wife. His wife injured herself. She hurt her arm so bad that she had to go to the doctors. And the doctors up here in Alaska aren't that good compared to those down in the lower 48. And they had to find a good medical doctor for her. And I understand, and it has to do what a man has to do in order to um, support his wife. I understand that. But it's just that it hurts because we've been like I said, we've been together a lot. And it's just, you know, it sucks that he had to go. And I was already sad, sad that, that week too, because three days before that, one of my good friends of mine also left. Her name was Juliana Medler. She was an amazing person. She, she was great. Great personality, great everything. Everyone here at camp loved her. We all loved her. And so when she left, she left the, she took a piece of my heart with her too, and it sucks, like, we bonded, we bonded, me and her and I, we bonded this past season, and just, it was beautiful, the way our friendship took, took flight, and, you know, I'm gonna miss her dearly, I miss her, I miss Nettle, even though they had to go home early, I understand they had to go home early. Neto for his wife, Juliana, or well, Julie for short, because she was homesick. It was her first time out here and she was homesick. And I could understand that. I mean, it took me three seasons, but I finally got homesick. <laughs> so basically what happened was, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell this short story first, and then I'm going to go back on to the commodity build up here. So what happened was, a couple weeks ago, Juliana and I and our friend Liam were supposed to hang out together. Okay, cool. And so we were going to hang out. But then I went to my room, grabbed my phone, talked to my mom for the first time in weeks. 
and talk to my mom about home, what's been going on back home, you know, this and that. And then once I hung up, I felt a little uneasy. I couldn't understand what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And so I went to bed. It was my. It was in the end of my shift. I had to be in bed in case we worked that night. And this is before peak week. And so I went to bed thinking, okay, let me just sleep it off and then it'll go away. Pain and simple, it'll just go away. Woke up. It was we didn't we didn't work at ten, so that was good. I woke up, and then um, I was still feeling uneasy. And so I don't know what was wrong with me. I really couldn't tell. It was something deep. I couldn't understand what was going on. And so I needed to be alone for a bit. Went to eat dinner. Julia and Liam and everyone else was there in the kitchen. I mean, in the mess hall. But I ignored them. I ignored everyone. I just kept to myself. Ate my food. Throw away my, my plates and my silverware. Walked outside, put my headphones on, and walked to the beach. I still didn't know what was going on with me. As I was walking to the beach, I was listening to music. And I, like I said, I still couldn't know what was wrong with me until the song Home by Philip Phillips came on. And that's when I broke down. I was homesick. For the first time up here in Alaska, I was homesick. I missed home bad. I missed my mom, my brother, my sister, my grandma. My uncles, my aunt, because everyone, I miss my friends, everyone, I miss everyone. I just broke down right there on the spot, listening to home over and over again, because it's just, you miss home, you get homesick a lot, up here. And so, it was bad, for, it, was, it wasn't it was bad, I mean it was my home, for my first time getting homesick, but it's something I had to do, I need money. I need to follow my dreams. I need, I need money to get my dreams. I need money to pay my bills. I need money to pay for everything I need in my life. That's what Julie was going through too. It was her first time up here and she was homesick. And yeah, it was hard on her. It was hard on me. I don't know what she was going through. Like I just looked at her and thought, you know what, just get over it. You know, I'm sorry, Julie. That's what I was thinking. That's my mentality. But then once I got homesick, I felt what she was feeling, and I stopped being that way towards her. You know, cause I, I'm a veteran. I've done this for three seasons now. Three, once I got to know what she was going through, I just stopped. I just stopped, just, you know, just stopped judging her a bit. You know, I wasn't judging you. It's just that you know, I, people think differently. And so, yeah, I got homesick, and I could see it in her eyes every day. She was homesick, and it was sad that she had to go, but I was happy that she went home because she missed her family so much. I understand what you were going through, really, because I felt it, too. Now, the camaraderie we build up here in Alaska, it builds lifelong friendships. Like, we have a couple friends out on the East Coast. They want to come down to Arizona and to visit us. Most of the group, biggest group here are from Arizona, from Yuma and Phoenix area. And so we have a couple of friends who want to come down and visit us, which is fine. And we want to have a little eco reunion back home. And so you know, I can't wait for that because the camaraderie, like I said, the camaraderie builds up here. It builds friendships. It builds the bonds. It, it's, it's amazing up here. You have to experience it. In, to know, in order to see what I'm talking about, we have to experience it up here. And since there's no Wi-Fi here, there's no internet, no cell phone access here, no social media, you actually have to talk to people. Yeah, actually physically talk to people. You know, to t discuss the work, discuss their lives, discuss their past lives, the futures, the present, everything in between. And you, be, you, make, you make friends like that. It's amazing. It's an amazing way a few words can go and lo and no little and no social media social media to distract you from making friends. Like it's amazing up here. Like, getting to know other people up here is amazing. And it's sad when they go home. I mean yes, you have 
you have you could get the phone numbers, you could write them letters, you could um text message them, Facebook them, you can, but it's just to me it's not the same. Because I'm more of a I wanna see you in person type person. Or I wanna hear your voice or see you in FaceTime type person. I can't deal with text messages. That's that's just the way I am. People are different, but that's how I am. And just like I said, when I go home it's sad. When Julie and Benno left, I was sad. I wasn't the only one either. My other friend, Jen, she was also sad because they, they both left too. They both left so early. I mean, I'm happy that they went home, but at the same time, I'm kind of bummed out because they went home. And, yeah. The camaraderie up here is real, guys. It is real. Okay, guys, so this is the end of this video. Okay, Gavin, over now.